Welcome back to Castle Motors. Man, it has been like six weeks, and I've almost forgot where I left off. But I think the gist of it here is we've got our portcullis, our new steel vehicle, being made in a medium factory. Yes, there it is. That's our big seller. And we've also recently built the throne, which is our aluminum-bodied new vehicle for our small factory. There it is. What an ugly brick. But people seem to like it. It's selling great. So right now, both of my vehicles are way deep in pre-orders. In fact, they're... yes, as time goes on, we're getting more pre-orders than sales. So I guess I'm going to need to do something about that, aren't I? Well, we've got a lot of money. 572 million now. And it might be time to get ready for a large factory. So we started this campaign on a hundred times difficulty, and most of that comes down to starting with a small factory. And we're past that point, so it's time to uh, really expand now that it's 1966. The main thing still that's difficult is the AI cars are 150% competitive, but that doesn't necessarily matter in the current version of the game anyway. As you can see, our cars are just selling like hotcakes. But, I might need to turn the price up a little bit. Let's make that, yeah, a 100% margin. Let's see if that slows sales down a little bit. Because right now, we're having to pay back all those pre-orders we can't fill. And we don't like that. So as we get into 1967 here, it will be time to update our vehicles. That hasn't stopped more pre-orders from coming in. Yeah, pre-order changed 83, 1000. Wow. People are just getting on like the two year wait list for these cars. So let's see in our markets here. Off-road premium, as of 1965, has finally come into existence. I think maybe we want to build a dedicated trim of the throne for that purpose. And we're also going to make a new trim of the portcullis. But first, the throne. New facelift. That will be our first update to it as well. So it's now 1967, and what's changed since 1961? So this is the SUV variant. It has six seats, and it's kind of marketing towards family utility, family utility premium, to replace the uh, engine as well. 1967. What's this thing have? Carburetors? That's fine. You can just give it a couple notches of compression. Or one. Ignition timing. Ooh, we can rev it higher too, maybe. Assuming, of course, that they actually like that. Which they do. Still making a amazing 74 horsepower. Now it revs up a little more, because it makes it easier to handle the transmission. What else is new? Still only three-speed automatics. We didn't put a locker on this thing. That doesn't seem right. Gotta have a manual locker. That'll uh, make it more off-roady. And of course, the whole theme of Castle Motors is big, off-roady cars. Even though this is sort of a premium vehicle. Disc brakes. We soften the pads a little bit. Yeah, they like that. Add a piston up front. Still like a rear bias. In fact, whatever, just like that. Off road skid tray, cooling airflow. Still on AM radios. 
some point later we'll unlock FM radios, but not today. Add some quality through here. Since we can afford the uh, additional engineering time easily. And I've got to carry those other changes to our utility premium version. Already got the manual locker. Get those better brakes in here. Still with good brake pads. I want more bias? Nope. Don't know why, but they like a crazy front brake. Often utility prefers it the other way around, but whatever. Monotube dampers. Always better, pretty much. Cool. Those are the changes to that. Now we've got to see if we can make a dedicated off-road variant. And we don't have solid axles on this thing. We've got wishbone suspension, which is a more comfortable ride. And it's decent for off-road, but not as good as solid axles. I'm still hoping we can make an off-road premium out of this. And for that we want... Oh, well we don't really have a SUV body type, do we? This is the closest we get. And for off-road premium, it has too many seats. It's not prestigious enough. And it's not the right shape. So maybe this car will not get to be an off-road premium. And uh, Sport Utility Premium, which it might be closer to, doesn't exist for another eight years. So we're not going to make that version. But we have the new 1967 truck and van coming up. And we can definitely max out the size of this factory. For what? Yeah, 40 million can add also QA. Yes, even more cars. Let's see, 446 trims with the QA and without 446 trims, huh? Interesting. I guess we have no QA slowdown at all because our master builders just do not care about quality assurance. They do it perfect every time. And I can't improve the automation without actually losing the cars I make, because the aluminum is kind of hand-built. I can't see a demographic score until I think I finish the engine setup, too. Small one. With some more automation, some more tooling quality. So this is the one with the QA. But it costs more than going to small, too, so it's not really worth it. So the cheap thing to do is just improve our uh, engineering on this. And we'll figure out how many months we want to engineer the engine for when we go back and double check the car's engineering. Let's see, so we took some shortcuts when we designed this car in the first place, huh? It has a low automation tooling. So let's just crank that up. That's the most expensive part of engineering, is designing the car to be efficient on an assembly line. But, uh, that's fine. Get this done in... 30 months, maybe? Yeah, that's fast enough. Two and a half years. And then we go back to the engine. We also set the engineering sliders for 30 months. What else, what else can we get out of this? Hmm. <clears throat> We're making, I think, enough of them. Let's get them real reliable. That should be a big uh, market we're targeting. We care a lot about reliability. Double check, I'm making 900 cars, I'm making 950 or so engines. It's great. <laughs> and we go straight off to 100% margins for this thing. With a 50% pre order deposit, so people stop pre ordering quite so much. And that says that we're going to lose money, but I'm actually certain that's wrong. 
Let's see. Total cost, $50 million. We don't need to take out a loan for that. And boom, on the timeline. Throne Mark II coming in 30 months. Now what about the Portcullis? This will be our second update. Probably after this is due to be replaced entirely. But I'm sure we can make some good improvements. Six years later. Now let's see. We have a big and a small version of the engine. And I believe the delivery uses the small version. It's more fuel efficient. Of course, delivery customers really care about that because they're driving all day. And uh, every dollar spent on gas affects their profits. And they like, wouldn't we be surprised, even less power. Using 87 octane fuel, yeah. That's a little more fuel efficient than it was before, at an amazing 17 miles to the gallon. And they do not like RPM limit. I could have to do with the vehicle's top speed, I'm not sure, but uh, I'll leave it where it is for now. And we have a top speed of 74 miles an hour. Hmm. Yeah, this is one of those goofy automation fuel economy things. Where as soon as you reach a new top speed, your fuel economy goes out the window. I think it's time to accept it, though, that we're going to go a little faster. To 85 miles an hour. And now if we go back to the engine, do they like revs again? They do. All the way up to 4,500. So, all in all, we've gained 0.3 miles to the gallon and the vehicle's faster. We could save even more gas by limiting the top speed in a stupid way, but that's not realistic, so I don't like to take advantage too much. All drum brakes staying on this guy. I think they're cheaper to maintain. Delivery has like a multiplier to uh, maintenance cost. Don't like any extra quality. Don't even want mono tube dampers. They don't want anything that costs an extra dollar. Not ready for a radio at either, are we? No. I think later on, maybe it's just because they get more wealthy, but they start to prefer a little more comfortable cars. Even in delivery. Right now, though, if you're a delivery driver, your butt can suffer. Let's see, the utility version of the car... That uses the big engine. Good to update that, too. Now, if you remember, this is our older pushrod six-cylinder engine. The Thrones, I intended them to use this engine as well. They actually had to use a four-cylinder engine because they these things couldn't fit inside. So, this makes a lot more power. It's not as fuel efficient, comparatively. They really, really, really like getting the RPMs up. I don't know what's changed that uh, everybody wants it higher now. Because remember in the past they wanted it kept low for reliability. But I guess our materials are getting better and cars are getting faster, so you have to compete. Lean out the gas rest of the way. We're still making two more horsepower than we were before. No room for more compression on there. That's it. Four more horsepower. More RPM. And, oh god, this thing had the two-speed automatic. Was it? Yes, they don't like the three-speed as much because of the wheel spin. And then, if you take away the wheel spin by making it reasonable, they still like it even less because they want to have a low speed or something. I don't have a genius way out of this one. Well, utility budget likes a two-speed, but proper utility likes a three-speed. So we at least go with a three-speed now and modernize a little bit. 
And they like it really geared down. I guess it gives them better towing capacity. Man. 40% wheel spin. Gearing top speed barely allows the car to go on the highway. But they love it. 220 in heavy utility, 190 in utility. Where, uh, if you don't remember, 100 is the baseline set by other cars. In fact, we can compare the scores that we have to the average utility competitor. Or the top three, rather. And you can see we're worse in a lot of ways, but it's much more actually utilitarian. So this is the, the big truck counterpart to more consumer truck. And I'm looking forward to, I don't know if you've seen the latest automation update video. This whole interface is going to change so it's a little more clear on how good you're doing for your market with the stats. I'm looking forward to that. Still all drum brakes. Yep, nobody wants disc brakes. Or no, eh, eh, they like them a little bit. But not much. So why re-engineer the car? Keep the drum brakes on there. It's still the 60s, you can have drums on a truck. I knew someone in college who was all excited to uh, get an old International Harvester truck. And he said he drove it into the garage on one working drum brake. And that's like a two or three ton truck, that's terrifying. This car has severe issues with wheel spin. Yeah, I bet, buddy. It's got 100 horsepower in the first gear, goes probably like 15 miles an hour or something. So this is our off-road vehicle. Because that's the body type they prefer, the SUV. And it's using the larger engine, which we already updated for the pickup truck. What do they like? They like lower gearing, too. Maybe especially now their engine has more RPMs. Not really sure what changes to make for off-road in this case. Keeping the drum brakes. Now what I might want to investigate is an off-road premium vehicle. There's some interest in a basic AM radio. Not comfortable enough for off-road premium, huh? Interesting. But it looks like the off-road market now has enough money they want an actual decent interior. So that's something. Not really sure how to make the car that much more comfortable. We already have a wacky suspension set. I guess it doesn't help, but uh, that's what off-road wants. Sway bar on there. Gets us a lot more comfort. Just on the uh, dual wishbone axle. Comfort's up a lot. We're still not approaching off-road premium quality. Even hydro suspension, they don't like that. Not really sure what we're comparing our car to. Let's see, our supposedly average off-road premium vehicle is worse at practical utility off-road, so it's probably a smaller vehicle, and just vastly more comfortable, and more prestigious. I haven't been thinking about prestige as a vehicle stat, but they like top speed and fancy materials. That's actually the thing that our uh, aluminum-bodied throne has a big advantage in prestige. But unfortunately, the throne that we have now just doesn't suit off-road premium. Maybe we'll see about making a new model for that, even. I'll have to look into what body types are available. But for now, that's an update of the Portcullis. Only the real update, I think, is going to come to the factory. Let's see. For 300 million, we can go from a medium 1 to a medium 3, about double our output in this factory. 
Maybe I'll just buy that and hold off on actually buying a large factory. Could save it for the next model. Spend a couple hundred million just on updating the tooling. It's getting very expensive. And I gotta make sure the engineering is up to snuff as well. Hmm. 35 months to get this thing done. Guess that's acceptable. And this is making almost nothing. Another 100 million to upgrade this guy. 150 even. Yeah, that'll be plenty. And you'll notice the price changing up here. The more money I put into my factory upgrades, and the more engines I make, the cheaper each individual engine is. Since we're selling out of cars, that's great. We make more cars, they're even cheaper, they sell even better. Ooh, engine update. Take us a long time. Oh, no, it's only taking 42 months because I had it on zero funding. So let's see. If I up the funding to an average amount, 50, right in the middle of the slider, you can afford, yes, even more reliability. Nobody's more reliable than Castle Motors. And we'll just go on a 100% pricing margin. These cars are actually getting very cheap to build. Now that we have bigger factories. In fact, this is putting our uh, prices pretty much right where we want them. Do I need a loan for this? Yeah, let's take out the loan just to be safe. I don't want to get caught off guard by paying back all these pre-orders. And now we let time pass. With 20 million dollars coming in every single month. And slightly improving. In fact, how's our marketing budget doing? Spending about 5 million on Gasmia. Let's make that a little more. And Havasia, we're only spending a couple hundred thousand. We really need to up our marketing game in here, I think, if we're going to sell cars in Havasia. Most of our sales are in Gasmia anyway. If you guys play uh, automation a lot, you already know Gasmia is comparable to America. See, they like easy to drive, big cars. Whereas Hevesia is kind of your Germany, Western Europe. They uh, care about safety a lot. Less about other things. It's not so much like Germany as like a Nordic country, but still. We've upped our marketing by a couple million. How about R&D? Work harder on unlocking new bodies. Suspension, driver assists, ooh, interior. We're going to start doing premium stuff and get a little interior advancement going on here. And fuel systems. That's what makes us more fuel efficient. And boom. I've decreased our profits of about seven million per month on all that extra spending but we're still doing great oh government of Vesia has passed a ban on the sale of leaded fuel vehicles hmm I'm pretty sure I should double check I'm pretty sure I already updated our engines be okay that 87 octane. Is that leaded? Oh. Regular leaded. I missed a big opportunity to go to regular unleaded fuel. But, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna suffer the consequences. We won't be able to sell our cars in Hevesia for a little bit. Despite just dumping a lot of marketing into it. Uh, oh, oh well. Oh well. We'll, we'll get it in the next update. We're a Gasmian company. We can be slow in getting rid of leaded fuel. I think. Oh, expenses coming in. We are starting our construction of the factory updates. And that's also put an end to our production of our previous car. 
Wow. And we paid back our pre-orders on a throne. I think. Yeah, all our factories are stopped. We're spending about a million dollars on car production, which is nothing for seven million. And uh, more than that on marketing, more than that on factory construction, research. So the new throne's out. It's selling at a pretty high price, and it's still selling like crazy. That factory is running as hard as it possibly can. And pre-orders are just piling up. You already have to wait 18 months to get a thrown pickup truck. Everybody wants one. If you don't have a throne, who even are you? Portcullis is coming out. Is that the same deal? A little more reasonable. Not like more than a year wait lists. But it's selling great. It's selling at great margins. It's bringing lots of money. And our profits are higher than ever. Now we really are equipped for a large factory. But uh, I'm going to wait one more year. What's coming up? Eight tracks. No more just radios. You can play your very own music in the car. That's crazy. Oh, and I think I'm going to actually save this for the next episode. Single point electronic fuel injection. High tech. In the 1970s. I think we're getting four speed automatics coming up too. So now that's 1971. We are absolutely rolling in the dough. We have a billion dollars in the account. 40 million coming in every month. I need to update our marketing and research again to just get rid of some of that damn money so we stop having to pay 150 million in taxes every year. And it's about time to make a replacement for the portcullis. That's going to have to go in a large factory. What are we looking at here? For, let's say, utility as a target. We've got a very strange looking truck body. Probably not a big fan of that. Lots of little cars. Oh. Now this is a van. Unfortunately, I like to double up on vehicle types. This isn't a great choice for us in terms of variety, but it's definitely in the style for our company. And of course, as you can see, we're unlocking body styles from 1975, even though it's 1971. That's the effects of all that research money we're spending. And it's very useful for us to get access to more of these bodies. I'm liking this. This could be a new castle vehicle. This 2.8 meter jeep looking guy. You get a SUV. Check. You get utility vehicle. Check. That could be a replacement. And a shorter version. Could be maybe a choice. I don't know if we want to replace the throne. Could make a new small factory. Might go for an off-road premium with uh, an aluminum body just to buff up the prestige. What else do we have to work with? We have the armored vehicle people mover. That's a little ridiculous. Oh, there's a 3.7 meter version as well. Limousines. Giant box vans. That's that's absurd. That's what we're looking for. We do have the Astro van. I like this. A van people mover utility. Sadly, no SUV version, which means the off-road will always be biased against it. Even the short version, which would be good for that sort of thing. So that's about where we are. You've seen these bodies. Let me know in the comments what should we use to replace our now aging, it's been updated three times, portcullis, where we need to have a good delivery, utility, and off-road version. And maybe we can replace our throne with a more modern van if we want to, although I love this bubble van. And uh, maybe we can make a new model as well. Might be time to really build something that will target that off-road premium. And if we're lucky, 
That's a good SUV variant. We can hit that utility sport market that's going to come into existence by the time we're done engineering the car. That'll be a big one for us. So again, let me know in the comments, what should we build? What should we call it? I'm running out of good castle names for cars. And on our way out, what are we actually selling? We have good awareness in this area. Monthly sales data. Selling a lot of utility trucks. We're hitting the budget market some for off-road utility, even though we're selling at 100% margins. We're still barely selling to off-road premium, utility premium. I'd hope those would be big markets for the throne, but they're not really. Maybe we need to go all out and get a, like, a full luxury interior. Delivery looks like it's our biggest seller by far. I know that's all the... Uh, called the Portcullis? Yes. Because that's the only one with the delivery van variant. We're selling 2,000 in delivery alone. More than 2,000. I think that's, uh, that's got to be about half our vehicle sales. What else are we hitting? Family utility. That makes sense. Commuter, that's a, uh, a small, very fuel-efficient vehicle for usually one person to drive on the highway to work. Not sure who's picking our 17 mile of the gallon trucks for that, but someone is. Even Commuter Premium. Family Premium and Family. Some people like our SUVs as a family car. It makes some sense. Family Sport, that doesn't make as much sense at, at all. Or Family Sport Premium. And some sales going off into the pony and muscle car area. That's not completely absurd. There's usually a little overlap with trucks in those. But uh, still our big things, delivery, utility right now, which is what we've been aiming for.